Hey everyone, uh, just going to do a quick video on the potassium permanganate bath, uh, also known as PP. Um, a PP bath, which is about a four hour bathing, bathing process. Um, I'm going to show you how to start it, maybe go over some uh, tips and tricks and what to look for when you're doing such a bath. Um, I'm going to do the, the bathing treatment on these fry. They are, I forget how old they are, but old enough to where I'm, you know, just still wanting to fight any bacteria blooms or flukes in the tank. Um, so I'll show you how to start it and what I do. It's very simple, but some people just wanted to see how I get it done. This is potassium permanganate for a bath. It's four hours at two milligrams per liter is the you know usually recommended dosage. So for that 70 gallon tank, I did the math and it is 0.266, again, 0.266 grams. Um, got my electronic scale here. I'll start the bath. We'll start um, at least the bath and then go over some of the uh, ins and out of potassium permanganate. 0.26 grams for 70 gallons is obviously not a lot. So let's see, 0.5. I'll give it a little bump, a little higher than. 0.266. Um, so that's potassium permanganate treatment for a 70 gallon aquarium. Again, at four hours. I'm going to put it in this right here. Going to give it a little bit of water just to kind of break up some of the particles and make sure when I put it in the tank, it is nice and um, broken down in the water. Otherwise you leave some particles and it's just a little annoying to deal with. All right, so that is my bath treatment. Take it over to the tank. my lids. I like to spread it evenly. That's why I put it in liquid form before I put it in the tank. So let's see. Here it is. Give a little bit of a rinse. Dunk it one or two times, get any excess in from here, it's all gone. Okay. Close my lids. See, it's still not spreading yet, so these pumps and the water uh, current in the tank will kind of distribute that out. So as you can see, it's a light pink color. Um, probably pretty hard to tell from this angle, but I'll go over here. It's a light pink. That light's kind of annoying, but oh well. Go from here. It's a very light shade of pink. And I'll keep it, try to keep it at this color for four hours. So. If I see that that color is going away, I will add, um, I'll usually, usually put the same dose into this receptacle again and then add it as needed to maintain this color for four hours. Um, by maintain this color, I mean that the potassium permanganate will change from a light pink to 
day, and it's hard to see that it's light pink in this because of the because of the light, I think. But um, from where I'm looking at the camera, it's not coming up out that too well. But uh, it's supposed to stay light pink for four hours. Potassium permanganate will change color to a reddish color, which means that it's deactivating. In its purple color, it's active and basically oxidizing organic material. And that goes both ways with good and bad things. Um, so, as you know, bacteria and um, other organisms in your tank are organic uh, organisms, and they will be affected by the oxidizing uh, nature of potassium permanganate, but so will the discus. They will, if you have it at too high of a concentration, you will burn their gills, which is why you are, need to get this um, dosage as close to um, the recommendations as possible. So again, two milligrams per liter, convert that into gallons, and then keep that dose, which is basically the color. At the end of the day, for me, it's this color that I'm trying to achieve, and I'm sorry that it's so hard to, to see. Maybe it's better this way. I'm not sure. If I put a white background, let me put a white background and see if that changes anything. This behind the tank and see if that helps. Maybe a little bit. No. Oh well. Well, even though the color is not coming out great in the camera, two milligrams per liter, four hours, and we are basically trying to prevent any bacterial blooms um, associated with the four week syndrome. Once the four hours are up, and I'm done adding potassium permanganate as I need see fit uh, to keep this color, I will, I don't use hydrogen peroxide like many people do. Um, usually it's recommended by a lot of people out there to put hydrogen peroxide in at the end of the bath or dip or whatever you're doing to neutralize the PP. I just do a good solid 75% change and that's all you really need to do. Um, you can do hydrogen peroxide, I don't, so I can't give you any recommendations on that, but I find that a nice big water change will alleviate um, the effects of any remaining PP. I know this is kind of like a me rambling about this topic, but I'm trying to figure out uh, what else to tell you guys. It's, for me, it's pretty simple, but I know this can be daunting to put something like this in a tank, especially with such little fish. People get worried. I do this with, you know, two week, one or two week fry that have attached to their parents. So I'm going even smaller than this, like just attached. Uh, you can get away with a lot as long as you um, are smart about what you're doing. And these fish are probably still gonna keep eating or trying to eat while, um, while they're getting treatment. They're more or less, their activity right now is being a little funky because of mostly me. I'm moving around and scaring them a little bit, but yeah, so that's how you do a bath. And again, after four hours, you want to change out the uh, potassium permanganate. I run UV filters in here, which reportedly does um, affect the PP in my experience and by others online. I'm not sure if it's 100% scientifically true that UV will neutralize the PP in the tank, but if it does, just keep adding um, potassium permanganate to 
achieve a nice pink coloration. If you start seeing it turn brown or red, that means that the organic material in the tank um, is more than the dose can handle per se. So you just need to keep adding some to achieve the color. Don't go crazy with it if you're just starting. And just make sure if, if you wanna do a bath for the first time, less is more. Once you get a little experience, then I would be more inclined to, to maybe up the dosages. But do this on a day where you're gonna be home. If your fish start turning sideways, or laying down or really look stressed, make sure you have water on hand to change it out. Instead of hydrogen peroxide, I should have said this earlier, if I put too overdose the tank by accident for whatever reason, I found that um, Seachem Prime actually will neutralize the uh, PP and you'll see it start turning white in the tank. It's pretty cool. I don't have any Seachem Prime anymore. I stopped using it. I use Seachem Safe now, which doesn't do that um, for some reason. But yeah, so if you have Seachem Prime and you find, think that you're overdosing your fish and want a quick way to neutralize it for doing a water change or whatever, I don't know how fast you guys can take drain a tank. I can do it very quickly, but uh, yeah, if you want to neutralize the PP in your tank before you do a water change for whatever reason, Seachem Safe is a good product. Um, but there's a lot of literature on it out there, probably some videos. Hopefully this adds to, you know, just a practical way of doing it real quick. I wish I could show you a whole four hours, but I'm sure you guys would just love to, love to see this thing turn red, I'm sure. But... Um, Yep, so that's how you do it. And just to reiterate, two milligrams per liter, four hours, a big water change at the end of it. Um, and you should be good. All right, uh, hope that helps. And I will try to next, maybe at the end of this video, at the end of this video, maybe at the end of the four hours, I'll try to get some water changes together so you guys can see how I do uh, water changes on all of these tanks. So, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.